Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about that one principle that everyone forgets to apply when they're trying to establish themselves in a new market, whether this is a small market and you're just starting, or this is a big market. We're gonna to be touching on both of those actually, that's gonna tie in perfectly. Figuring out how can I rank this product? What kind of change do I have to make depending on what market it is? So maybe you have a list of ideas right now. Um, you know, pull those up in another tab, watch this video, and then you'll be able to go through there and see, okay, what changes do I have to make in these markets to get ranked for them? So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy watching, be sure to stick around to the end. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but without further ado, let's get right into it. We'll jump right into this really big market right here because I want to stress this point early on. If we look in this market, okay, floating shelf, let me just delete this so that closes. If we go into this market floating shelf, there's going to be tons and tons of results, tons of different variations, tons of different differentiations, tons of different sizes, colors, everything you can think of. And if we come up here, we can see the top row is filled with results at 14,000, 8,000, 7,000, and then finally a sponsored one. But points being made, it's a very, very competitive market. Now, I was actually, you know, just reading, I don't, I don't have it next to me, I was going to show you, but Elon Musk's um, biography, and very, very good book, read it if you haven't already. And then this morning, I was listening to um, a motivational talk, as I usually do when I do my workout in the morning, and Elon said, if you're establishing, I forgot what the question the interviewer asked, but if you're establishing a business in an existing marketplace, so like for instance, SpaceX compared to, you know, there's already big national governments that are competing in that space. You have to have a product that's significantly better than what already exists. And specifically with consumer based businesses, right? Because um, if the product from a new company or someone with less social proof is only slightly better than what's there, well, then the customer is just going to buy the one that has been trusted, the industry standard, the one with all the reviews, the one that's already at the top. So what I wanted to discuss today was making product differentiations at different scales, depending on how big the market is. So if you're in a massive market like floating shelf and you're trying to rank something kind of standard for a search term as big as floating shelf and you're not going for something you know, like this is literally something that I can compete with. For instance, I sell a hanging shelf. It's a little bit different, but for the most part, it's in the same market. What you have to do is make a product that's significantly better than what's already being provided. So if there's really no complaints, that might be hard to go off and you might want to find a new market. But in general, if you're someone that's super ambitious and you want to go for a huge market with all these big competitors, well, be prepared to do a couple of things. Your listing quality has to be significantly better than what's already there. And that, that might mean with a market this big, hiring a 500 to $1,000 photographer to do your photography. Now that sounds daunting, I know, it's one of the reasons I usually don't try and rank products in huge spaces, but if you are, that's something that might be required because you can't just have a mediocre, the same or less quality listing, it has to be better than what's already there. And then more importantly than just your listing, the product that's being delivered has to be noticeably significantly better. And I say noticeably because it's one thing for a customer to get the product and realize they like it, but you have to get them to convert initially, okay? If they don't know what's different about your product before buying it, then you're not going to have the sales that you expect because of the change that you're making. I see this all the time. People think that they're making a change that's so important based on the reviews or functionality or something like that, but if the customer can't see clearly just by looking at your main image that you have a different product, it's probably not going to work, no matter how much energy and time you put into that. And now that we've talked about this, this kind of huge market like this, that principle scales back. So like if I was just going to come into Black Box by Helium 10 here and do some product research, maybe I want to find something that has a smaller market and maybe something that I can actually afford to get into. So maybe I'll come in here and I'll just rank it by reviews. I'm um, we'll look at some of this stuff and we'll just try and find an example of a product where I have a fighting chance at establishing something because what currently exists isn't that competitive. Okay, so I'll cut back in as soon as I find a product that we might be able to uh, use as an example here. Okay, so ironically, we found another version of a hanging shelf. But specifically, I think I'm going to use this as an example just to give you an idea. I think these corner ones are kind of an 
underutilized market. So why don't we go actually uh, view that on Amazon? Okay, so let's do this. We can already see that this listing, um, according to black box here, it's doing about 5,000 in sales per month. We could just confirm that really quick, see what their sales are looking like. Um, and yeah, it looks accurate, about 260 sales per month of this listing. It's not a bad listing. Um, it's not a great listing. Um, the price is okay. I'm sure they're profitable there. This is a pretty cheap product. So now all we have to do is ask ourselves, can we be significantly better than this product? Okay, so they've included some hardware with it, it looks like. Uh, if not, it's very misleading. It looks like they have. They've got some hardware with it. We've got some rope. Well, they have not five stars. So why does someone give it a one star? I'm uh, just making it. What a nightmare. I love the theory, but the shelf expected for it to already be assembled. You have to do the entire assembly and it's a headache. It comes with a piece of wood and a string, so you have to assemble it. Guys, that is the easiest thing that we could possibly p do. Okay. I'm actually in this market. I know how easy it is to get a supplier to pre-assemble things and then package them. Make this thing pre-assembled, include hardware, and then maybe improve the quality of the wood. Okay, so if we go hanging corner shelf, let's look at that as a whole, as a market. I wanna compare this to just looking at floating shelf, okay? So look at how the, the um, kind of scale of difficulty in creating a new design changes as we vary in markets. So first thing I'm noticing as we look here, well, a lot of these aren't hanging corner shelves, right? I mean, those, those are not hanging corner shelves, okay? So first of all, those aren't even exactly what this is. Now it's technically close and I'm being a little bit picky about that. Um, but if we're looking for who's doing exactly what that guy is doing, we have maybe five to 10 main competitors for this product. And then if we wanted to grab some proof of concept, we can look in here and see, well, wow, this one's doing 17,000. This one sells 113 units per month. Let's see, this one sells 11 units a day, 340 a month, 8,000 revenue. Um, this one, okay, this one only has, okay, so that was actually the same one we were just looking at, but that's their white variation. That one's doing slightly less. Um, this one sells two a day. This one sells three a day. Okay. So there's plenty of sales going to different um, varieties of products in this space. So we can say people are willing to buy this product if you make a significantly better product. Now, let's talk about the difficulty of creating a significantly better product if you're in a market where everyone has already done something like that. So specifically, I got the motivation for this video, like I said, from hearing about this um, story of kind of like Tesla competing in the automotive industry. There's huge behemoths there. And he said the likelihood of success was probably like 10% and he had to come to terms with that. Um, and it was probably true. You could kind of think of that here when you're going up against kind of behemoth competitors that have thousands and thousands of reviews, the change that you have to introduce, if Elon just introduced a new gas car to the market, probably wouldn't have worked. Okay, but because the product was so different and so significantly above what's already existing, that's what made customers fall in love. And, and that's what you have to do with this market. So you're probably asking, well, how do you do that? Sometimes I ask myself that too, and I can't necessarily figure out if it's super difficult in a huge space like this. So scale back to a space where maybe you have five to 10 competitors, and then to stand out and be significantly different isn't as big of a concern. Because when you're kind of coming into a new market, the threshold is lower for what the customers are expecting. There's only five to choose from. They're gonna choose the best one. So as long as you're slightly better, that'll work and you might be able to take a spot and become the next guy that has 500 reviews, the next girl that has 500 reviews, right? So if there's anything you could take away from this video, increase the quality and innovation of your product as the size of the market goes up and down as well. So if there's only a couple competitors, you can be slightly better than what's already there and you'll probably do well. If you're going into a massive market, maybe you have hundreds or thousands of competitors, you have to have a significantly better product to get people to even consider going to yours because there's already so much social proof and so much trust with those other big brands that they would just buy from them. Even if something's slightly better, they'll probably still go with what they know 100% works. But here, we have five to 10 competitors. They're gonna go with what's probably slightly better if there's only a few other options, right? It's just gonna make sense to them. There's, there's not a whole page full of 
people with thousands of reviews. So that's gonna do it for today's video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed and leave a like if you enjoyed, leave a dislike if you didn't. Other than that, I'll be seeing you here on the channel tomorrow for another video. Thanks so much, later. Thank you.